Okay, thanks, Alan. Uh, that was a great demonstration of uh, how quickly you can deploy an app uh, with a programming cloud. And you can do it all in a browser, right? The, the um, development, the deployment is all in a browser. Using it, all you need is a browser. So uh, we've put together a panel of senior developers to um, comment on what you just saw. Uh, and uh, so sitting to the right is um, Joel Klein, who's a kernel architect. And joining us uh, offsite is Bob Sandheinrich, who is a software engineer. And I'm Chris Carlson, a user interface uh, developer. So, gentlemen, do you have any, any comments off the bat? Well, it's a cool demonstration. Um, one thing that I would love to see is just the, the names of the cities for the, the two bars of icons. Which one's which? Yeah, oh, true, yeah, I, I did not think of putting that in. Um, I can actually go, I can put that in now and redeploy if that could yeah, work. Yeah, sure. You can go ahead and just type in location one and then down here. Um, location two. And then once again, if I go ahead and reevaluate this, and then I'll reevaluate this cell as well, um, and I can redeploy it to you. Hang on one second here. Oh, there you go. So now has labeled Houston, Chicago. Um, and once again, if I want to redeploy this, um, we can go ahead and do that. And everything is pretty automatic. So if I want to say Houston, Chicago, submit and give it a little bit of time. So just evaluate everything. There you go. So now it has the labels for both cities on them. Nice. Right. It was easy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's one of the nice things about the Wolfram language is it's very, the code is very malleable. It's very easy to go in and, and make modifications. And since it's interpreted, you, know, you don't have to go through a compile step. You just evaluate and get the new output. So you can very quickly go through iterations and, mm -hmm. and uh, develop things. Um, I'd, I'd like to make just a comment about um, the output that you get on the cloud. Sure. Um, so by default, what you get is not necessarily formatted uh, really nicely. <laughs> For example, what, when you deploy it as a PDF, you get a really tight frame around the, the contents. Sure. So you can add a little white space, for example, by using pane. Pain. Okay. So if you just wrap your um, your output with pane and specify uh, image margins of some value, sure. it'll give you a little more white space relief in there. Okay. Um, you can also, I mean, you can you can go beyond that. You can, for example, there's a there's a construct called framed. If you just wrap framed. that with framed, okay, then you also get a, a nice black uh, frame around it. Okay. So, I mean, there, there are lots of features that you can use to to style what you see in the cloud. And you can make very, uh, you know, very nicely refined professional kinds of outputs. And even something immediately like this. So if we want to deploy, like I said here, deploy the form function with your city one, city two. But then I specify the output to be a PNG. And I know that I can change that output to even be like, I know PNG ended up rendering kind of tight, but PDF might give it a little bit of extra wiggle room. Like it might just be marginal. But if I try, like, let's say, if we do output as a PDF, um, I just wanted to see kind of what that looks like because then you could we could choose PDF, PNG, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. GIF, et cetera. Um, just one more time here, Chicago, Houston. I know these ta these evaluations take a little bit of time, but uh, that one is quick. It's all worth it at the end of the day, I guess. <laughs> we seem to be running a little bit slow today. Yeah. yeah. So PDF ends up rendering it a little bit clearer, if I may say so myself. But yeah. well, why don't you why don't you go back to your um, to your notebook and just try adding that additional formatting? So just wrap your trip planner there. Sure. You're so you're saying um, this call? Um, no. The so the definition, or you can just you can put it right in the cloud deploy if you want. Yeah. Sure. I can do it right. So in just the... just put framed of pain on around where around trip planner. Okay. So. So like that? Right, framed, open uh, bracket, and then um, uh, pane after framed. So pane. Okay. Okay, and then inside the pane, well. comma, image size, or, or image margin zero, I don't know, like um, say 20. And now image margins, you're saying where would that go? So that would go after trip planner. 
Okay. After the closing bracket for trip planner. Okay. Right. So comma image image margin zero twenty. Image margin twenty. Right. So that should do it. Try that. Okay. So now let's redeploy this again. But if this was a PDF, it would still image margins would still be fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah perfect. Whatever you have in there. Oh wow, nice. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. So that gives you a little bit of white <coughs> relief. The the frame doesn't come out so good because it's on a back a black background, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You get an idea what you can what you can do. Awesome. Yeah. Um, one other comment was so what you've deployed with with just the bare bones cloud deploy uh, is accessible only by you. Sure. Right. So if you want the world to be able to look at what you've done, then you need to specify within cloud deploy, comma, permissions arrow public. Or I can even, yeah. down here, I can say set permissions, and I could say accessible Ex by everybody exactly. since it isn't. Right. You can do that as well. I could do that. So perfect. And now it's accessible by everybody. Now anybody who's listening to this, uh, this event can, I mean, if you can uh, type in that URL, <laughs> uh, you, can, you can actually go to <coughs> what was just deployed and try it out. Perfect. Yeah. Several people asked about uh, the, the fact that you had two versions of um, Trip Planner there, mm -hmm. which were actually different functions, and that's one mm -hmm. feature of the Wolfram language, which is polymorphism. So you can, you can define different functions that have the same name, and it chooses the function according to the types of the arguments and the number of the arguments. Right. So, so I would also say then, for even those who might be familiar with uh, traditional-ish programming language like Java, let's say, that also supports polymorphism. That's a familiar feature that's available in the Wolfram language. Right. Yep. It, it may have looked like a recursive call, but it's not actually recursive. Those are two different functions just happen to mm -hmm. have the same name. That's a nice yep. way of documenting that those are actually two aspects of the same, the same function. Mm -hmm. um, some other, I mean, you did some other things that were nice, just nice programming practice in, in what you did. Um, like, for example, using width yep. to factor out uh, the size so that you, you know, if you want to change the size, you don't have to change it in three different Every places in the source yep. code. Um, uh, and an, and another, another nice thing is um, that you defined a function, the trip planner function, separate from the cloud deploy. I mean, you could conceivably just put the whole, you know, do the whole implementation <laughs> inside your cloud deploy, but it's nice to sort of separate that. You can test it uh, either in your desktop version, if that's where you're working, or in the cloud, and then when you're Satisfied that it's working the way you want, you can deploy it with the cloud deploy. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing uh, you could add to this is some logging. You could, in, if you were interested in finding out, you know, what cities are popular, what what, what trips are people planning, and you know, is there something I can optimize? You could always uh, write the write the inputs to a file, keep appending sure. to that, and then go look at that later and maybe make adjustments on, on how you're doing things. Definitely, definitely. You could cache results if the same sets of cities are getting requested, you know, within a short period of time. Right, something. right. Very so cool. this is just the r just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with um, cloud deploy, and you used a number of our d the data functions like icon data, mm -hmm. um, uh, weather data. There are scads of those. There's just a ton of information in the Wolfram language. There's country data, there's city data, there's element data, there's, I don't know, elementary particle data, there's just <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Um, and you can, you can use those. I mean, you could use those here directly to, to expand the, your trip planner. For example, um, you can use country data to get at the, um, the electrical outlet type <laughs> of the country, you get an image of that. You can, mm -hmm. you can use, um, the mapping functions to put a map of your destination in the output. Uh, there's, there's just all sorts of possibilities. I mean, Bob, Bob is the expert on uh, a lot of those things, um, uh, how the geographic um, functionality works in some of these data packlets. That, but there's a lot to draw on. Absolutely. And I was going to say even something like you know getting the two cities population just kind of compare quick side by side or something mm -hmm. like that using city data just extract a wealth of knowledge really that you can then just compare and really expand on the trip planner I guess here right mm -hmm. um, do we have any uh, 
questions um, online. If you, if you have questions now, you can go to the chat pod and type them in, and we'll, um, we'll try to answer what we can. Um, somebody had asked about um, whether this language is free, the Wolfram language. So anybody can go uh, to the cloud and get an, uh, an account for free, which has a basic level of access. There are higher uh, subscription levels for the cloud uh, if you were going to do some serious development. The desktop version, which is Mathematica or Wolfram Desktop, is, um, is a commercial product, a, a paid product. Although if you uh, are a student, the student license is pretty reasonable. And if you're at a university, many universities have site licenses, so you can get uh, Mathematica essentially for free uh, at the University uh, the University of Illinois does. Yeah. Right. So students don't pay for it there. Um, and also, you guys can look at uh, this page right here. Just give me two seconds. I'll go ahead and fire it up here. Um, so you guys can see pretty much at any tier just to deploy to the cloud, whether it's an instant API or a form, um, et cetera. There are different tiers to deploy to. Uh, for the most part, you, for just kind of general recreational hackathon needs, if you will, um, you won't really need anything past the free tier. Um, but of course, if you are starting to scale whatever you built, um, you can go ahead and do Explorer, Developer, um, producer if you start to actually make, you know, I guess, company out of it and team, et cetera. Um, so yeah, there are di different levels um, that are available within uh, the Wolfram Programming Cloud for deploying. Yeah, let me, let me just uh, highlight a couple of other things that are online that might be useful to people. Okay, so um, if you go to, let's see, uh, www.wolfram.com slash language, there are resources um, for just getting familiar with the language. There's uh, an introductory um, video here from Stephen Wolfram. Um, and if you just are interested in examples, there's this code gallery here, which has a bunch of uh, typical applications. Some of these also have cloud deployments in them. And uh, so you can visit one of these. I, I think this was mentioned in the video. You can visit one of these. It'll give you an example of, how, of uh, how to do something with the Wolfram language. Most of these are pretty basic, pretty simple. This is uh, doing face detection and images. And, um, and then you can, you can click here to, uh, I guess this one's not yet live. Uh, you, you can click here usually to take that example into the cloud and then you can play with it yourself there. Um, for hackathons. Yeah, I was gonna mention this too. Right. There's a, there's a page here with uh, just that collects a bunch of resources that would be interesting to people who are thinking about using uh, Wolfram things and, and hackathons. So there's information here on the programming cloud. Uh, the Wolfram language runs on Raspberry Pi. Uh, a lot of people are, are doing interesting device, uh, you know, hardware-oriented uh, projects with the Wolfram language, um, and so on. And let's see. Um, and there's also this page here, www.wolfram.com slash cloud, that uh, will give you information in general about uh, using the Wolfram language in the cloud and getting online. There we go. So I'm, I'm looking here at uh, questions that people have sent in. Um, so one person asked, uh, how does uh, the city field in an input form handle misspellings. So those, if, if you specify a type like city, and there are lots of types, there's cities, there's countries, there's web, web addresses, all sorts yeah. of things. Um, that's what we call a smart field, and it will actually interpret what you type in, uh, try to interpret it as a city. And it's actually pretty robust uh, with respect to misspellings. Um, you, can, you can be pretty messy about it, and it generally does a good idea of guessing what you intend. Um, that's a nice feature of those fields, you know, it doesn't take any effort to, to get that functionality in your forms. Right. I can take another question uh, from the chat room. Is the Wolfram language intended to be an easier way to develop web apps or programs rather than using HTML, JavaScript, PHP, MySQL, etc.? Uh, this is an interesting question because there's a couple, um, a couple answers. It's definitely 
an easier way to develop things on the web. Um, you can, the nice thing is that you can pick and choose. If you really want to, um, the, I think the power of it is kind of in the back end, which would sort of be the replacement for a PHP type of thing. Um, but you can, for the front end, you can use, uh, as we've been showing here, you can use a lot of Wolfram language stuff to, to make display artifacts. Or you can, like PHP, you can generate uh, all the HTML, CSS, JavaScript um, for your front end from the Wolfram language back end. Um, a lot of the things that we see in the, in the notebook, they are driven by Wolfram language and showing up in, in you know, our, our internal HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And I was going to even say that there is, uh, in built in the Wolfram language, connectivity to MySQL databases too, right? Correct. Um, for, those, for people who go to hackathons, um, I work as a, a hackathon intern, so I go to hackathons on Wolfram's behalf. Um, a popular thing that I've seen um, a lot of people use the Wolfram language for um, is to actually deploy instant APIs. Um, they're instant RESTful APIs that you can then call from JavaScript or Python or whatever their kind of favorite language is. Um, so that's a really easy, quick way to integrate Wolfram language with your favorite programming language, if you will, um, while still harnessing a lot of the built-in computations and uh, knowledge that is built into the Wolfram language. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just kind of like a little side note, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, do we take any more questions or kind of? I think we have time for a few more, don't we? Yeah. Um, when, uh, one person asked about uh, the Wolfram language on the Raspberry Pi. Actually, there are two, two related questions. So one person asked, what's the relationship between Mathematica, which comes on the, the Raspberry Pi, and the Wolfram language? So the Wolfram language is the language itself. Mathematica is one implementation of that. Another implementation is uh, the programming cloud and so forth. So um, Mathematica is the Wolfram language in addition to a development environment and a, a programming interface. So you can think of them as actually being the same thing if you're just thinking of the language aspect of it. Uh, about developing for the Pi, there, if you go to um, wolfram.com slash community, there's a large community of uh, Wolfram technology <coughs> users. And I think on the right, you'll see a, a, um, a topics bar, and there's a Raspberry Pi thread or a Raspberry Pi group. Mm -hmm. And there are many examples there of using Wolfram language on the Pi to control cameras, uh, implement a weather station. Uh, all sorts of things. So I think if, if you're interested in that kind of thing, that's a, that's a good resource for you. Mm -hmm. There may also, I, I'm sure there are probably also, there's a web page online, I would guess, uh, about that, but I don't, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. And even on the wolfram.com slash hackathons page, there is a little mention of Wolfram language connectivity to the Raspberry Pi, so you guys could definitely go check that out as well. I'm looking for more questions here. Is it possible to do an HTTP post in Wolfram language? Yes, from two senses. You can use the URL fetch function to make um, any kind of web request. You can specify the method as post. You can also write your instant API to receive post methods or you know, po uh, posts or gets or whatever. So yeah, that, that, that kind of aspect um, to Wolfram language is all there. There was a question about using uh, data input by the user in the Wolfram cloud. Uh, there are lots of ways to do that. You can, you can import data uh, from a URL. You can import data which you have locally on your, desk, on your, your laptop. Uh, there's a new thing we just rolled out called uh, Data Drop which is a repository just generally for, for data online. You can very conveniently drop data into a, a um, data drop bin, and then you can pull that in to, uh, anywhere, whether it's in the cloud or on the desktop uh, with the Wolfram language. Um, that's one of the things that we've, you know, making connections to, to data sources, to other programs, to whatever it is that uh, the Mathematica or the Wolfram language might want to work with. That's one, one of our emphases, and, and we work very hard to make it easy to, to pull in data from all sorts of sources. Uh, let's see what other questions we have. 
who owns copyrights for apps deployed with the Wolfram language? Um, you do. We don't. We don't have any claim <laughs> at all on on the things that you develop with the Wolfram language. So I see a question here. Uh, I'm also new to programming, and I'm <laughs> mostly overwhelmed by it. Is it the language you? You, is the language used in Wolfram language applicable or the same as Java Python uh, and similar to MATLAB? Um, so if you heard me earlier, I said more traditional languages like Java and Python. Um, I think syntactically Wolfram language is very different from those two. Um, it's very function driven. Uh, a lot of the data and variables and et cetera that you get back are either entities or functions, uh, whatever it may be. So I think in that aspect, it is, it's very different from something like Java or Python. Um, syntactically, it looks a bit different as well. Um, I think the best resources, though, uh, for getting started about learning it, and I know I'm still learning it myself. Yeah, I've only been learning it for a couple months, um, is really just check out the reference page, reference, uh, or it's like reference.wolfram.com, mm -hmm. right? Um, there are tons of examples in there, um, whether it's you know instant needs for just kind of deploying web forms or web pages, whatnot, um, to actually writing full applications in Wolfram language. Um, it is sort of in intimidating almost, like how much there is built into the language, um, but the docs are superb. There are tons of examples that you can go ahead and just play around with. Um, so I think those are kind of just some ways to get started with the language. Um, and once you start to get the hang of it, you'll see just how easy it is and how familiar the syntax can actually be. So I just kind of wanted to address that. Mm -hmm. One person has asked about if you can do more graphically intensive um, uh, um, things with the Wolfram language, including <coughs> within Manipulate. The graphics functionality in, in the Wolfram language is very strong, and you can do very sophisticated things. We haven't even come close to, um, to uh, addressing what you can do. And anything that you can do uh, within the Wolfram language, you can also do within a Manipulate. Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always do. You can always implement something, uh, which is going to take a long time to compute, and your manipulate will not be very responsive. But generally, um, you can you can do some very impressive interactive graphics things uh, with the Wolfram language. And I think uh, I'm getting the signal that our, that we're out of time. So um, thank you, Alan, for a very nice demo, and thank you, panel, um, and thank you for attending. And we hope to see you at another uh, Wolfram training event soon.